Well, I certainly don't like to claim victory before it's won, but I think today is going to be the day. Assuming things go fairly smoothly, we don't have any major issues, there's no reason why I can't finish this fence today. And by finish, I mean get the rest of the horizontal pipe welded up, which we've only got four more pieces to go right here. And I've also got to get the gate hung down here, and I'm hoping there's enough time to make a latch for this. Uh, if not, then that'll be just one of those nagging finishing touches that we need to do. Along with that will be caps for the posts. I don't have those yet, so we're not going to be doing that today. But we should at least be able to get this to the point of being functional. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Something is up with this top hinge. It is just froze solid on there. And I think I can loosen it up, but I really need it straight in order to hang this gate on to the four x four post here. So maybe a hammer will fix this. I don't know why that is so tight. How does it make sense? The factory hinges on this Powder River gate are a little bit too wide to fit on that post that I want to mount it on. So I think I'm just going to come in here with the plasma cutter and take about three quarters of an inch off of either side. I did encounter a bit of a problem hanging this gate. Let me show you what I'm dealing with. This post that I'm wanting to weld the gate hinge to is leaning that way a little bit, which means the gate doesn't really fit up very good to the new fence that I just built. So to combat this, I've got a couple of choices. I could just hang the gate and just say it's fine. The, the problem with doing that is the gate would hang at such an angle that it might touch the post that's there now. I could hook a chain up to this post and try to pull it over with the tractor and bend it up straight, but I don't suspect I'd have much luck doing that. For one, this post is full of concrete, so you're not gonna bend it. If anything, you would just shift it in the ground. Well, now you've loosened it in the ground, so there's no reason why it wouldn't just go right back to where it was. So what I've decided to do is add a few shims down here at the bottom. We needed about a half inch of shimming, and that seems to get the gate pretty close to level. 
As you can see on the other end, it's kind of hard because I've got the strap here holding it up, but the gap is pretty good on this other side now. So I think I've made the best of a not so great situation. I know that post was straight when I put it in, but what happens, especially in this ground, because we've got a lot of, cr of clay and it shrinks and swells as it gets wet and dry. So things move, even when you reinforce and brace it, it's really hard to keep things to stay perfectly still. Even some of the gates where I've put, you know, like the hoop style entrance to try to hold those two posts true to each other, even those move. Uh, there's a couple gates over in the corral that really only latch properly during certain times of the year when the ground is the correct moisture. On this gate, I'll end up doing like a, a hoop on this post so that it won't really matter where the latch pins are as long as they can reach out to this point. The only thing that I have to worry about then is just that the gate would sag so much that it would start hitting the post, but I don't think it'll do that. It would, it would have to sag quite a bit for that to happen. I could have mounted the gate the way that it has been, which would be with the hinge on this side. We know this is a true post and but then you just have the same problem on the on the other side. Now the latch isn't meeting up with a post that's straight. And I really, I wanted the hinge on that side now because one of the problems that I was having with this gate is that when it was open, it would just be sticking out right here. So when cattle came up, I mean, the old cows that know where the gate is had no problem, but a lot of times calves would go on this side and then you've got this gate sticking out and it would just make it difficult for them to figure out where to go. So having the hinge on that side now, when I open the gate, I can just put it right up against the fence line and it won't get in anybody's way. Of course, we're gonna wanna get a few clamps on this. Just to hold everything together while we're working on it. I think I'm pretty happy with this, so let's go ahead and weld it on. Time for the moment of truth. Let's take these straps off and see how it works. It does work, but man, that hinge is still awfully tight. Let's see if we can't do something about that. It's really tight. Well, not what I would call perfect, but it is better. what seems like countless hours and days working on this fence, it is finally done. And I know that I still need to put a latch for the gate, but what I'm talking about is cutting, notching, and welding all of this pipe. The fence is about 75 feet long with eight spans where we hung pipe. Each span has five pipes, which means we've got 40 horizontal pipes hung here. That means that I had to cut 80 notches to get this fence done. And now that it is done, I gotta say, I just couldn't be happier with it. Let me show some footage of the fence that used to be here so you guys, in case you've forgotten, you can see how big of a difference this is. The fence that was here before was a combination of boards and barbed wire and Barbed wire has its place in field fencing, but it really has no place in corral fencing. All it really does in a corral is provide a place for an animal to hurt itself. It doesn't really stop a cow from going through a fence. It just kind of makes sure that she hurts herself when she does. So it's really good to have the barbed wire out of here now. 
this pipe is strong. I fully expect this to last my lifetime and possibly beyond. In fact, the past couple of years when I weaned the calves, I had to put a hot wire up here in the little field to keep sort of a gap between everybody because I did not trust the fence that was here to keep everyone apart. So this is gonna make my life a little bit easier now that I don't have to mess with hot wires and we can wean the calves and, I mean, we can wean the calves and put them right into this pasture and let them touch noses through through the fence right away and I wouldn't have any problem doing that. This is actually quite a momentous occasion for me because this marks the third and final side basically of the corral now being built in pipe. The goal of converting this corral to boards and barbed wire to a pipe fence started with this here. This was the first fence that I changed over to pipe. This was before YouTube. I wish that you guys could have seen the fence that was here before it was pretty pathetic. It was just posts and barbed wire. There weren't even boards on this one. And on several occasions, when I was trying to work cows here in the corral, they would jump over, just push right through it. Even when I just had the cows locked up in the corral for the winter time, there was several occasions where the cows just in the morning would be out here in the front field because this barbed wire fence wasn't enough to stop them. That's when I decided that it was time to start changing everything over to steel and it all started here. When I built this fence, this was all new material. In fact, this was back when metal wasn't ridiculously expensive. I think a stick of this three inch square tubing was like $60 and this inch and a half pipe was like $35 for 21 feet, which it's probably three times that now. The next fence to convert over to metal was this one here. This I did do on the channel, if you guys remember. Uh, it wasn't last year, but maybe the year before. And this was in pretty rough shape when I finally tore it down as well. It was a combination of fence boards with barbed wire on the inside, and all of the wooden posts pretty much were rotten off and, and not only leaning over, but they were sinking down. This fence was only like probably four feet tall when I took it down. So what I'm getting at is that the main perimeter of the big corral is essentially done and now I'm getting down to just the working facility. So never a shortage of things to do, but this is a huge check off of the list. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.